Hi, Denise Caldwell here with Effectual Services. Thanks for joining me for this IP Minute to Go. Our topic today is trademark watches. You probably know the definition of a trademark or you wouldn't be here on this video with me. We'll cover the basics first. According to the USPTO, in the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2018, they observed a roughly 7.5% increase in trademark filing application activity by volume compared to the same time last year, with 638,000 applications filed, nearly 88% of them electronically. I was surprised that 12% were filed in paper. Personally, that seemed like a high number. 367,000 registrations were granted. In the same time period, 589,000 patent applications were filed, and we've seen patent filings trending somewhat down in recent years, probably due to an emphasis on quality and not quantity and strategic decisions around which countries to commercialize the invention and probably some uh, significant pressure on IP budgets. The USPTO has a robust data visualization center. You'll see from the blue arrow pointing to the box from the home page, enter data visualization, and you'll come to a page that has a number of resources to help educate yourself around pendencies, volumes, and other important data that will be helpful as you uh, build out your programs and, and uh, learn more. What is a trademark watch? It's a proactive step taken by the owner or their provider on their behalf. You can customize and configure according to your client needs and preferences. And importantly, it gives you options, which we'll talk about in a moment. As with any task or program development initiative, the why is very important. Why do we need to do this? So we'll talk about that for a minute here. There are 4 million marks on the principal register in 45 classes at the USPTO. Examining attorneys are highly skilled and well-intentioned, but they don't report possible conflicts to other marks. They engage in prosecution, make a decision, and move on. So your mark is your responsibility. You have the option with a watch program for filing an opposition or a cancellation of a confusingly similar mark. And it gives you time. And time also allows you the opportunity to reduce your spend. If a competitor gets way down the pike investing in their mark, you are likely to encounter more resistance if you oppose or move to cancel them. Some best practices. Consistency is critical. You can design your program uh, with any frequency you desire, weekly, every other week, monthly, whatever makes sense for you. You can also determine which is the triggering activity, and you can pick more than one. Is it filing? Is it OG? Is it publication? What is your trigger for when you're going to make a decision? And that brings me to uh, triaging decisions promptly, having a decision-making tree and implementing it uh, consistently across all of your decision-making once the facts come to light. You can uh, watch identical marks in all classes. You can watch for similar marks in your class. Um, there are a number of options there. Those are just two examples. Geography is something you'll want to take into consideration. Are you watching only in the U.S. or in non-U.S. countries? And a couple of more sophisticated nuances, color marks and foreign language is something that you'll probably want some expert advice in. Know your resources. Two widely used watch platforms are CoreSearch and CompuMark. The USPTO itself has a number of resources like the Data Visualization Center we looked at, and there are a number of uh, uh, manual watch options there. Uh, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has a department for U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and they have a number of what they call mitigation programs for um, confusingly similar marks or counterfeit materials coming across the border into the U.S. that you might want to uh, educate yourself about. If you'd like a copy of this slide deck for future reference or to share with colleagues or have a question or comment, please just reach out to me, denise.caldwell at effectualservices.com. Thanks for joining me for this IP Minute to Go.